Uh, hi, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Akira, and I'm an iOS, iOS developer at Babo. Today, I'd like to talk about uh, genetics with Swift. But first, I have a question. It doesn't work. Okay. Uh, how many of you in this room you, you use Swift for, to write iOS app now? Maybe 50%. Okay, that's cool. Uh, yes, and we also use Swift for to to write our iOS app. And actually, actually, this is my this is my first application that I use Swift. So I really read many articles, researched a lot, and tried a lot, and I learned a lot. And one of the things I found Swift is interesting is genetics. So today. We are going to go over how to, how to use genetics with Swift. But first, uh, I have other question. How many of you use genetics now? Like uh, even Java or C Sharp? Java. Java, OK. Maybe one, two, OK. OK, so let me, let me show you the example, uh, which is from Apple. Oh, by the way, can you guys see? The, okay. What's that? What's that? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so this is an example from Apple. So let's say we are making swap. We are making function to swap two int values. So it's gonna be like this. Uh, it's quite simple, right? Just pass two parameter to bar to variable and just change, swap the value. And next, let's say we want to make a swap function to uh, to swap two double values. So it's gonna be like this. The difference is just a type of parameter, right? So next, let's say make the function to swap two string values. The function is gonna be like this. And now, now you know these are identical. It's almost the same. The difference is just parameter. So as we are engineers, so we, we would think is a more useful, more flexible way to write the function. Uh, the, the answer is yes, there is, which is genetics. So this is a function to write swap, to swap value using genetics. So the difference, so now you, you don't see the specific type like the int double strings in this function. Instead, you, now you can see like t, right? So t's are actually genetics and t is a placeholder. But the placeholder doesn't, it actually doesn't say anything about what t must be. But it does say, the placeholder say, does say both A and B has to be same, same, uh, same type of the T. So, you, so now if you, you, if you use genetics, you can write function yeah, abstractly. And, now, and also you don't need to change any code to, to swap the value. You can just pass to int value like this. And also, if you want to change string values, you can just pass string value without changing anything. And as both A and B has to be the same type, you cannot pass like a int value and a string value to this function, because A and B has to be the same type, same class type. And I think it's useful and flexible, right? But I also thought, when I, when I saw this, I also thought, like, why not use protocol to swap values? It's also can, it's possible. So, so this is a same function using any protocol. So just the difference is just here. You, it uses any protocol here. So you can also 
And now you can also pass the int value to swap two values function. Just into any. And also if you want to swap string values, you can also do like this. But you can do, you can swap, actually, you can swap int and string value calling this function. I think it's not safety, though. You can use protocol to swap to int value and flexibly. So I thought, which is better to use? And also, I thought, like, uh, what is the difference, actually, between protocol and generics? So let's take a look at two, these two functions. The first function is, uses like a protocol. The parameter is protocol. Uh, by the way, printable is the protocol Swift provides. So, and the printable has only one variable, which is description. And in this method, like a parameter is printable, and it returns printable object. And next method, uh, which is execute generics, is uses generics, and the parameter is p, and the the type is T, and T, T, here, T, has, T conforms printable protocol, and which returns T. It looks almost same, right? Because, like, uh, in these functions, you can, you can get only description from P, because P is like a, it, it's printable protocol in this in first function. And also in this function, a T only conforms printable protocol. So you can only get description from P. So it, it looks no difference, right? But it's actually, there is difference. So take a look at return value. So up here. So in this function, it's P is almost the same, but in return, return value, like uh, if you want to use it, the return value uh, after calling printable function, you have to, you have to do typecast to use a uh, return value. So let's say like, uh, we, we have movie class and movie object here and which conforms print printable protocol. And, we, and I pass the instance to the execute protocol function, and you can get return value, which is printable protocol. And if you want to use it as movie class, movie object, you have to do cast and call show, show method. But if you, if you use generics, you don't, need to, you don't need to call, you don't need to do cast to use the value. You just make an instance and pass, pass it to execute generics, and which returns movie class. And you don't need to do cast to call show method. Right? I think it's useful. And I think this is a different difference. Now, now I think like uh, Swift is flexible and useful. And next thing I've, I was thinking is like, uh, how is the performance? Is it slow? Is it fast? Is it same as a protocol? So I made two examples. So let's take a look at the program. So first one is like I, I made swap method. now. So I just call many out of times. And so this swap, this part calls only 
call swap to int, int function. Yeah? And it, do, it doesn't use protocol and generics. The next function uses protocol, ah, uh, sorry, generics. And last one uses protocol. And I call out of times here. So now uh, I run it with, without having optimization. You don't have optimization. The speed is perform performance is same, almost same. But if you have optimization, if you run it with optimization, now you can see like a uh, generic and int is faster than protocol. And this program is it now is running on Swift 1.1. So let's change to uh, let me change the I use it Swift 1.2. Let's uh, let's run it with optimization. So it's much faster than. 1.1 and so this is a swap function so I, I almost made one another pro, uh, program just keep in implementing count so here I made one simple class which, which does only increment and incre uh, this is a protocol I made, incrementable. And uh, it has only increment method here. And, and in this part, like, uh, in the first part, it keep calling execute protocol function, uh, which is here. And the parameter is protocol, incrementable. And this method uh, uses generics. And the type of parameter is T, it's generics, which conforms incrementable. So let's see the speed performance. No optimization, the speed is almost same. But if with optimization looks same on Swift one point one. So let's change the Swift version. Point two. I think it's a bit faster than protocol. Compare with protocol uh, protocol function. Okay, let me go back to the slide. So I would say, like, uh, it's, I think uh, genetics is fast, but it depends on like, optimization and Swift version. So now, I, I hope 
you think like a, a genetics is useful and fast and flexible. And, and then I think you might, you might think like, uh, okay, so I know like uh, genetics is fast and useful and flexible. So you might think like, uh, okay, so how can I use it in practice? It's actually, uh, I also made two examples today. Uh, the first case is data source. I prefer like a light view controller style. So I, I, I prefer to like take out like, uh, any data source method from view controller. So I made. So it's here. I made custom class here, which conforms UI table view data source. And, and here, this is an array, and T, uh, the type is T, instead of having actual class type. And here, I'm defining a cell for row closure variable, which is called on this method. This is, which is uh, one of the method of UI table view data source. And now, like, uh, let's say now you are in, you are on somewhere in view controller, like a view view deep load method. You are. Now here you make UI table view instance here and make data source instance and assi assign it to table view. And also you can set closure here. And as I'm as I'm setting string type here, I get the body always I get from uh, this data source. It's always be it's always string type because I'm specifying string here. So item is yeah. so I can I can use the item without having without having a, any typecast. And of course you can set string array to data source, but you cannot set int array because I'm not I'm specifying a string, not int. Or do you specify any object instead of string? Uh, yes, you can, you can do it. But you have to do typecast okay. if you want to use it in this method. OK. But it's actually <laughs> there's a warning. Uh, on 6.2, it's actually so genetics doesn't work on data source uh, table view de delegate and data source. I think it's because of bug. Um, and I, f I found it on Open Radar uh, this issue. So I can, let me show that. So I, I wrote the same data source here. Here, here, here. And I'm calling respond to selector method, and now you can see you can see the result is false, which doesn't tell it doesn't exist. But actually, in this data source, there is a method here. But if I don't use generics and make a custom data source class and call respond to selector, the return value is true. <coughs> So I haven't checked this issue on latest Xcode yet, but now like genetics doesn't work on table view delegate and data source. And second example is API call. So now generally like iOS app connect to server side and call API and get data like uh, maybe JSON. 
and get it and convert JSON data to object using object mapper. So when I was working on a small project, I thought, what if I can call API like, uh, and specifying return value using generics like, uh, like this? So let's say I want to get list of user from server side. So the interface of the request can be like this, Swift, uh, sorry, request slash uh, bracket user. I also like, I need to make object mapper to convert JSON to, from JSON to object. And so as JSON is any object after serializing data, but, and the return value should be what I want, like a list of array, or maybe a list of anything, like a movie or something like this. So it can be like a generics. Return value can be generics. So that the interface also can be, it's like this, get any object and return something, return T. So the, for example, if I want to get just user object, object map by interface, it's, it's going to be like this, get parameterize any object and return user. And if, the, if I want to, if I want to get media, return value of media. And then finally, I have to get the value, for, uh, return value from API client. So the, I have to write completion handler after calling API. So the interface has to be like this. I, I, need, I need to get T, something, like user, list of user, and return value is nothing. I don't need to return anything. Yes. So this is an example of the, what I said now. So it's here, let's say I, I make media and user class here. And I'm making media, uh, so in, in this, in here, I want to get like a list of media. So I, I, now I specify, I want to get list of media here. And I need to write object mapper and completion handler, which is here. So as I as I am specifying list of list of media here, so I don't I cannot like a type like a list of array of user, and I, I get compiled out. Now you just need to write. And finally, here, completion handler. You get a list of media. And if, also, if you write user, you get compiler. As I'm not running local server now, so I cannot show you the be able to show the result now. But this is a example of API call. Okay. So I would say genetics is fast, genetics is useful and flexible and practical. Yeah. Um, I like genetics 
and I hope you like the mix. Okay, thank you. So today is my colleague on GitHub now, so please check. Let's show. Sorry, I, I'm not familiar with C++, so... Yes, yes, yeah. You can, you can do it. It's optional. Uh, just a comment. I think one of the advantages of using generics is when you use value types, actually. Mm. Because um, I haven't tried any one kind, so I hope this is correct. But I think like, if you return a protocol, you cannot do that um, like with value types, because mm. uh, the compiler would know a space to reserve for, mm. for, your, uh, for your data. So you can use generics there. Also, like for uh, like if, if you want to store something as a, as a property mm. and you want it to work with both objects and, and value types, uh, you, uh, you have to use generics. You cannot use uh, mm. Yeah, and so it's the same with optional type because that's. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 